it is going to be 100 degrees day after day after day for maybe about a solid week. It is crazy. Let's see how the dome is doing. How's it going y'all? You are watching the Green Dream Project. Jim here. Now if you're new to the channel, my wife and I were building our own earth bag home off grid here in the Arizona desert. Now because we are in the Arizona desert, it is hot and dry and we are about to move into one of the hottest, driest times of the year. June is usually one of the, the roughest months here. We are just going into a heat wave now. Looking at the weather for about a week out, it is going to be 100 degrees day after day after day for maybe about a solid week. It is going to be crazy. And a lot of people are wondering how the temperatures in the dome are gonna be. Usually there's a 20 degree difference between what's outside and what's inside. Earth bags have thermal mass. They collect that heat during the day and they release it at night. So it kind of helps regulate the temperature, but it's not insulative. So on these hot, hot days, one after the other, will that thermal mass build up and will that temperature on the inside of the dome kind of become unbearable at the end of the week? We're about to find out. This should be interesting. Now keep in mind, the dome is not finished. There's still quite a bit to do. But let me show you one of the dome's biggest weaknesses right now. Right now we have a temporary plywood door over the entrance to the dome. And this is mainly to keep out some of the wind, keep out some of the sun, maybe uh, some of the rain when it does come. But obviously there are large gaps in here. It's just a plywood door, it's not super efficient. So really there is still a lot of heat transfer that can happen right here at this entrance but it should be interesting to see how this holds out in this coming week. So currently it is 98 degrees out here. I'm gonna take you in and uh, we're gonna see what the temperature is in the dome right now. Now keep in mind that we've been having some hot days. It's been in the high 90s for probably at least the past week. So it's already been kind of collecting heat. Right over here is where we have our thermometer. Now it's reading 81 degrees inside the dome, which is the highest I've seen it so far. And the day isn't over, so we will see if it gets any hotter. And we'll see how those temperatures do over the next coming days. So I'll check back in with you later. But I'll tell you though, uh, it feels amazing in here. You know, obviously it's probably just coming out from outside, which is 98, but it feels nice and cool. But people are different, which is really why I wanna kinda make this video so you can see what the temperatures are. Because I could come in here and say, oh man, it feels fantastic in here. But maybe for other people, it'd be like, oh geez, this is it's already becoming unbearable. I don't know, people are different. So we'll bring you the numbers and we'll see how this goes. So we are now in the inside of the trailer. We keep, we're keeping it dark in here. Jess is in here working on a video. But as you can see, we have two fans running. They've got the AC running. But it feels pretty nice in here, right? It feels okay. It feels okay. So with that thermometer that we have inside the dome, it's connected in here so we can kind of read it on the inside. So in the dome, it's 81 degrees as you can see. And inside here, it's about 86, 87 degrees. So that's crazy. So inside the trailer here, we need the two fans running and the AC running and it's still cooler inside the dome. All right, y'all, good morning. Uh, so time to check the temperature inside the dome. Spoiler alert, I've already been in there. <laughs> now, I opened the window last night, but I forgot to open the door like right away this morning, but I did open it. Don't mind the mess, y'all. Still doing some work in here. So it really only dropped to 77 degrees inside here, which um, not a huge drop from where it was yesterday. More hot temperatures are coming. It's gonna be around 100. So I'll probably leave this door open for like a little bit longer, but as soon as the uh, sun comes up over the mountains, it's really gonna start heating things up. 
we'll see, 77 degrees. Not a temperature I'd like to start the day with. <laughs> All right, it's another warm one. I actually don't think it hit the triple digits today. It's right 98 right now. It might have hit 99. And inside the dome, it is 83 degrees. 89 inside the trailer. It is crazy. Uh, but 83 degrees, I still think that's, that's pretty good. That's the warmest so far I have ever seen it in the dome. But 83 degrees inside here, that's not too bad. Uh, and it, it still feels really good. And this is just, this is all natural. Uh, you know, it's 89 degrees inside the trailer, but that's again with the two fans and the AC running. It takes all that just to kind of keep it somewhat manageable inside the trailer. But uh, man, this is actually feeling really good. How's it going y'all? It is a beautiful cloudy morning here in the desert and I am loving it. We don't get too many days like this sometimes, so you know I enjoy them when they can. A lot of people enjoy the sunny days over here in sunny Arizona. Sometimes we enjoy the cloudy days. <laughs> it's nice being outside without getting blasted by the UV radiation. I'm also excited because today is the day I get to go inside there and start hooking up some receptacles, uh, start getting everything wired up, uh, and getting ready. Today I'm expecting a delivery of more six gauge wire. And when I get that, then I can run wire from the shed over to the house and, uh, and we can hook everything up. Pretty soon, we might have power inside the earth bag dome and I'm crazy excited about it. All right, y'all, it is a cloudy, cloudy morning. So I kind of left everything open last night. I left the window open, I left the door open just to kind of keep it a little cooler. Uh, I don't think the temperature dropped too much in here. It's 79.9. Uh, but so far I am really satisfied with the way the dome temperatures are holding up and we'll just see how it uh, keeps going. There's still some more warm, warm temperatures coming up so we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Oh yeah. We got the lime in the bucket. Thanks to Jim. So what kind of science experiment are you doing here? I'm gonna try making a lime wash to put over the lime plaster that I just did. I'll tell you, I could have uh, I could have used clouds for uh, the rest of the day if I wanted to. <laughs> Jeez. Sun's back out with a vengeance. So I'm just gonna mix up a very small amount of this. So like the the lime plaster I use, I'm using the natural hydraulic lime and this type of lime you do not need to slake first. As soon as you add water to this, it's going to start to set. So basically after I get this mix, I'm going to want to use it immediately. You don't need much water? Um, start with a little bit and then see. Probably need to add more. It's supposed to be the consistency of full fat milk. So we just keep adding water slowly until I get where it needs to be. This might be good. Oh, you got that quick. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, y'all, so I'm in the dome, about to get to work. I'm gonna grab myself a bag of goodies and I'm gonna work from the bottom up to the top. I'm excited, I'm excited about getting these receptacles on and uh, maybe soon powering up the dome. Very cool. All right, let's go down to the basement. All right, y'all, down in the bedroom. Got my tool pouch, got my bag of goodies, and then I'm gonna wire up the, uh, the bedroom here. It's just two receptacles and a light switch. So this is my first receptacle, so I'm kind of excited about that. First receptacle is wired up and ready to go. I just got one more receptacle, one more light switch, and the bedroom is done. All right, so I got my first ever switch wired up. I put this crimper sleeve on the grounding wire. I think I'm supposed to do that for the others. I'm gonna go back, add the crimping sleeve to those uh, grounding wires. But otherwise, pretty much done down here. First room done. <laughs> 
I tell you, it's been a challenge keeping this thing moist. Yeah. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. If we did the lime plaster on the dome, like, is it re is a lime wash required over the lime plaster? No. Uh, the lime wash does add, like, an extra layer of protection for the wall. But um, it's kind of good if you want to add color to it. It kind of acts like a paint. So I thought starting with like a white base might be good. And then maybe I'll add some more color on top of that. Sort of like a gesso on a canvas, right? Yes. I was making it look whiter. Yeah. The sand is probably what gave it that gray color. A lot of people are like, oh, I thought it'd be whiter. But yeah. since it was so heavy with the sand, that's probably why it's more gray. And that's why this is more white. That's another thing that I didn't mention about the natural hydraulic lime versus the non-hydraulic lime. It's the natural hydraulic lime is going to take on the color of the aggregate. The non-hydraulic lime, I think, is usually more white. I kind of wish I had a bigger brush. Nope, I thought I had a two inch brush, but uh, does a, a one inch brush better than what you're using? Oh yeah, should be a little better. Getting a technique down? Yeah, I'm gonna go over the, go around the racks with the smaller brush, and then I'll hit the larger areas with the one inch brush. All right, so now I'm in the dome. So I'm gonna do the ground floor, and then I'll head up and do the loft. All right, we got another one wired up. I honestly think this is my best looking one yet. Although while I'm in the midst of uh, wiring the second receptacle over here, uh, I have a visitor. You can probably hear him right now. Crew, came to hang out with daddy? Crew says he's been hanging around with uh, Jess way too long. He wants some guy time, so he's hanging out here. Right crew, you want some guy time? Got time. Maybe he just wants to hang out here because it's cooler here than it is in the trailer. <laughs> I don't know. All right, y'all. This is the last receptacle down here. Then it's the switches. But I might go up top and wire that last receptacle, then deal with the switches down here. I feel like I'm getting more and more adept at doing this. By the time I'm done, I'll have some new skills. Of course, then you don't do any of this again for years, and then you forget all about it. All right, looking good. You still have the biggest areas left. So this is the second batch, right? Of course, they're tiny jars. Now it's best to apply a lime wash right over a freshly applied lime plaster. How fresh? Just uh, before it fully cures and hardens. That way, the same chemical process that's going on in the lime wash is happening along with the chemical process happening with the lime plaster and I think that helps make it more of like a cohesive unit. It's kind of hard painting on such a rough surface. You're doing a magnificent job though. All right another outlet installed. Problem is got ahead of myself a little bit. I got a little too excited. I want to install one of these GFCI outlets downstairs. So back down to the bedroom, to the very one I started at. Gonna take this out, put this GFCI one in, and then I'm gonna take this one, put that up to the loft. It sucks that I gotta kinda take that out and redo it, but that's just the way it is. I got ahead of myself. But I'll get these switched out real quick, shouldn't take me too long, get that last outlet in, and then I should be good. Then it's on to the last two switches. Feels amazing down here with the heat, with the heat the way it is. It's probably getting close to 100 or probably hasn't hit 100 yet, but it's probably getting there. All right. <laughs> A little struggle, but we got it in. All right. Now I take this up to the loft. Still working with that second jar? Might be the third jar. Well, you have enough? It's hard to tell. Oh no! I think I might. I think I might. That is white. It's whiter than I thought it would be. 
Is that good or bad or just a thing? No, I think it's good. Then if I want to put other colors on there, maybe those colors will really pop. Yeah, pop. Ooh, almost there. A lime plaster with a white lime wash like that could definitely maybe help keep the dome cooler, eh? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Do you think we should go with that? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's do the other things before <laughs> making any decisions, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, update on the heat. It hit 100 degrees again today, and it's getting warmer in the dome. So right now, 85.5, so it's still climbing. And even though it kind of cools off in the evening, it heats up quick during the day. But 85 isn't bad. Right now it's 90 in the trailer. And that's again with the AC going, with a couple of fans going, so it takes quite a bit of energy to get that thing to even like 90 degrees. So I'm in the loft. And I'll be honest with you, um, the temperature difference between down there and up here really doesn't feel too much different. Well, this is the end of the line for the outlets. They go all the way around downstairs and then it ends up here. All right, last one in. Easiest one because it's the end of the line. So I just had the one hot, the one neutral and the one ground. So, pew, all set y'all. All right y'all, for my last trick, basically I got one power source coming into this box here and I wanna wire up two switches. This is my most complicated wiring thing yet. I guess this is a very common way to do this, but uh, my first time. So it should be interesting. Basically I'm gonna have to make some pigtails, split the power source in between the switches and well, you'll see. So these wires are definitely longer than I need. So what I'm gonna actually do is kind of, I'm gonna cut these and I'll use these as part of my pigtails. So you see, I just combined all these neutrals. I won't need those. Tied them all together, put a little wire nut on there. This can go back in there. Okay, I got all my ground wires hooked together with a couple of pigtails. So you see that I got my hot wire coming in from the panel. Got that tied together with a couple of pigtails with a wire nut. So now that's split into two. Crew's enjoying this cool nighttime temperatures. It's nice now, hey buddy? So I'm back inside the dome this morning and uh, temperature just dropped a little bit. So it was 82 when I first came in here. Now it's uh, 81. So airflow is pretty important and it's always good if you can get some of that cool evening air in to the dome and kind of cool things off a little bit. The temperatures reached 100 degrees yesterday and I think the highest it got in here was about 85. So still not too bad. Last switch, I'm gonna hook this up and then uh, I'll be done with all the outlets and switches and everything like that. Then it's just getting power from the shed over to the dome and we should be all good. So the switches are all hooked up, wires are all tucked in, and uh, everything's looking pretty nice. Eventually this will actually do something. Very cool, y'all. So a little update as far as the dome temperatures. Last night, I left the door and the window open to the dome and we got temperatures as low as 77 in there. So it did bring things down. Um, it's supposed to be another hot one today. Temp's over 100, so we'll see how it goes. All right, as it was scheduled to be, today is a hot one. 101 degrees. Woo! It is baking out here. It has been hot for like the past week. Let's see how the dome is doing. Well, immediately it feels nice and cool in here. Um, 
85.8. So as the heat continues outside, it is getting a little bit warmer and a little bit warmer inside the dome. How are you dealing with this heat? It is hot. It's, it's even hot in here with the air conditioner running and two fans. Do you know what the temperature in the dome is? No. 85? <laughs> Cooler than in here. Looks like the temp in here dropped a little bit, 92.5. 85.8 in the dome. See, I wasn't lying, y'all. Give you the straight up numbers. So Jess, tell me what you think about uh, now that we got all the uh, outlets in place. Very cool. We're getting closer to getting some power in here. So yeah, the outlets are in place. We got them all downstairs, up here, up in the loft. Looking good. Although we could, we probably have enough power to run an AC unit, maybe like a mini split or something like that. We did not plan for that because we think that this dome will be very energy efficient, especially when we're done. The most we have planned right now is a ceiling fan. And that might be enough. Um, just a, maybe just a little more ventilation in here, a little more air circulation. A little more air circulation. I think that would make it a lot more comfortable. Getting the air to move between uh, the, all three parts of the dome, the underground portion, the ground floor portion, and then the uh, loft. Right. Now the underground portion is cooler than the ground level where we are right now. It is very nice down there. Mm -hmm. At the hottest point we've seen inside the dome, that was still about 15 degrees cooler than it was outside, right? Uh, yeah, I, I would say at least 15 degrees cooler, at least. Yeah. And comparing that to what we're currently living in, in our trailer, it, it was cooler than that even. And that's when we're in there and we're running the, the AC in there with a couple of fans. All that energy just to bring the temperature down to a bearable level. Yeah. And it gets really cool like if you're sitting right next to the AC, but on the for other some side reason of the room, it's, it's for some reason she's editing videos way on the other <laughs> side of the uh, RV where it's the hottest. And crew, you know, we got to keep it got to keep him comfortable. He I think he would rather be in the RV, but uh, I think he kind of enjoys it in here. Yeah. Uh, it's a very comfortable temperature. I think these natural building techniques uh, earth bag, straw bale lends itself to so many possibilities as far as efficiency goes. And, you know, like I was telling her, I mean, a lot of people ask us, are you gonna upgrade your solar eventually? Are you gonna add more? And I honestly think we're on a, a really good path to using less energy. And when we live in here, um, I think it's gonna be way more efficient than what we're living in now a lot more comfortable mm -hmm. and just, uh, I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, why not? If you can reduce your energy needs and still live comfortably, like why not do that? Why not do that? And I'm sure um, in future videos, we'll be showing you some of the other ways that uh, we're using to like heat and cool this home and make it more comfortable and kind of what all goes into that. Uh, because there's there's a lot of like low cost or just natural ways of doing that where you don't need special like equipment or technology or energy oh, to do that. Yep, yep. So it's definitely a work in progress, but uh, it's coming along. And uh, already I'm really impressed with the efficiency of the Earth Bag Dome. So stay tuned, uh, you know, we'll be experimenting with uh, some more plastering techniques, more electrical coming up, and we'll catch you in the next video, everyone. Bye. Oh, oh crew says bye. Crew, you have enough of the dome? Ready to go? Ready to go? You ready to get out of here? Come on. Let's go. Oh, no? You like it in here? Maybe he's liking it in here. Oh. <laughs> you like it? You comfy? You comfy in the dome home? Oh. Bye. <laughs>